So these LEDs that we're using for our design, remember the back of it has this metal plate. It's designed to dissipate the heat. Well, these LEDs have been designed to um, attach to a PCB, a printed circuit board, and be soldered directly to that. And so I, well, I don't have any printed circuit boards lying around that accept these LEDs. So I've been racking my brain trying to figure out how am I gonna attach this LED securely to a some sort of a heat sink that will allow us to run this at high current. Well, I came up with a solution and I gotta say, it's, it's not all that elegant, but I think it'll work. Let me show you what I did. All right, take a look at this. I constructed this little contraption here uh, to allow us to attach our LEDs to. I mean, it's, it's not all that complicated. All it is, it's just, it's a wooden block. And on the front of that wooden block, I've uh, basically screwed in with four screws an aluminum plate. And that aluminum plate, I mean, it's just, it's like, um, it's like from aluminum ducting. I mean, so it's not complicated. It's really cheap and easy to get. You can pick it up from any hardware store. So I, I put that on here. Hopefully that'll be sufficient. I've also, you can see the three LEDs that I've put. I've soldered them together in series. Because remember, that's the way we're going to hook up our LEDs, right? In series, one after another. So I've soldered them together. And you can see this very interesting black halos surrounding them. This is where I really had to, I'll put it this way. It was painful to put this stuff on. I, I have this um, epoxy. It's a thermally conductive epoxy, which should be very good at this sort of thing. But I discovered when I opened it that I haven't opened it. Um, well, the last time I opened it, it was many, many years ago. And uh, it really wasn't as malleable as it once was. So I had a hard time getting it out and mixing it together and making it work. And then when I finally got it to work, it wouldn't solidify fast enough. This thing takes hours for it to cure. So it took a long time. It's still a bit tacky to the touch, but it's secure enough for us to actually get some work done. So I managed to do that. And hopefully this is enough to give um, the LEDs a way for the heat to escape. I've also taken our BUZ71A MOSFET and attached that to the same heatsink. I just used a screw. This was a lot easier. I mean, these, these uh, MOSFETs are designed to be screwed on to, to heat sinks. So there actually was a hole already there. And I just kind of screwed it in to get this to be attached to our uh, to my contraption here. So hopefully this will suffice just well. The next thing we need to do is actually take um, take this and wire it up to our circuit board. Let me let me bring the circuit board back here so you can see where we're at. I'm gonna put this aside. So this is our circuit as it is right now. And if you recall, we have our BS270 MOSFET, which is right over here. And here's our uh, single LED, which I'm gonna replace with those three LEDs, and this MOSFET is going to replace this MOSFET over here. So, you know, I already mentioned I put this onto the the, uh, the heatsink to take away the heat. The other reason it's on the heatsink is that these prongs, I was scared that they wouldn't fit into my breadboard. So I, I Googled it, and it turns out they do fit, but some people are like, yeah, it might bend the springs a bit too much. So this was just the safest way to do that. So basically, I'm gonna have to run some wires to get from here to there. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to solder some wires to my contraption over here um, so we can connect it over. So uh, bear with me while we get this soldering underway. You can watch me work. All right, here we go. There we go. Hopefully that, uh, I got a little, ah, that shouldn't be a problem. It wasn't very, very good solder on this side, but I think it's okay. Just look at how I wired this up. So this is going to be our supply in. So our supply from our uh, power supply in, and it's gonna go into the front of this LED. And these LEDs are hooked up in series. So the energy is gonna come in from this red LED, or sorry, red lead, <laughs> and go through these LEDs one at a time. 
and pass out of the end of this LED and go into the MOSFET. Now this is actually going into the drain of that MOSFET. That's the middle pin of this particular MOSFET. And then the other two pins, basically the green one is the gate and the yellow one is the, um, the source, which is gonna go back to our circuit. So let's bring our circuit back. This is our supply, like I said. So I'm gonna take our supply and I'm just gonna, these are solid core wires, so it's why I'm having some great difficulty turning these. Let me just do it this way so it doesn't move around too much. Put that into the supply. And then I'm going to replace our existing LED and MOSFET with these. So let me pop the old LED out. I'll take that and put that aside since we're not gonna be using that right now. And then I will take uh, the old MOSFET out as well. That's this one right over here. So carefully pull out this BS270 MOSFET. Once again, look at the size difference. This, this one's gonna be working a lot better for us. There's our BS270 MOSFET. And then let me plug these leads in. So this is our gate, which will go in right over here. And this is our source, which will go in right over here. So that should do it. Let's power it up and see if this works. Okay, here's my supply. And I'm gonna add this in over here and push the button. Nothing. It's not working. Why isn't it working? Oh, <laughs> my voltage is still at five. I haven't put it up to 12 yet. Of course five is not gonna work, right? Remember, five volts, it's not enough to even get over two of these LEDs. So there's not enough energy to get through the circuit. It's not gonna work. I gotta push this up to 12. Okay, it's up to 12 now. Let's try again. Ah, it lights up. Look at that, it's working as expected. Oh, it's so nice when things work. I absolutely love it when things work and go to plan. Hmm. All right, so it's working. But it's not at its full intensity. By the way, these lights are pretty bright, but they're not as bright as they should be. We're not um, pulling the 100, sorry, we're not pulling the 350 milliamps that we wanted to originally. I remember, all we did is we, we, we changed the LEDs, we added two more LEDs, we changed this MOSFET, which is allowing us to uh, absorb the extra voltage, and uh, we removed the, the BS270 MOSFET. We didn't actually change anything else in the circuit, and it's the rest of the resistors, the parachute resistors in here, that are going to create or request the right amount of current. And so these were sized for the old... Um, a single five volt LED. So I haven't changed them. Therefore, the current that I'm pulling right now is gonna be the same as the previous one. So of course it won't be as bright. We're gonna to have to up this a little bit. So we're gonna make those changes to those, uh, to those parachute resistors. But before we do that, I wanna actually, you know what I wanna do? I wanna to test to see what the voltage is around these uh, LEDs right now. So let me, let me do that. I have a, I'm gonna plug our scope in. All right, uh, okay. hopefully this doesn't short. Let's try it out. Eeh. No short, good. Okay, works as expected. Let's take a look at our scope. So I'm gonna just fire up the scope here, put it up on the screen. And da, 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 da. looks like we are operating okay. And let's put some voltage through here. Ooh, 9.1 volt. Actually, you know what? Rookie mistake. I did not confirm that we're actually exactly at 12 volts. So let me let me do that really quickly. My apologies. I should have done that already. <sighs> rookie, rookie, rookie mistake. Okay, so let's do this properly. And we will test to see that we are actually running at proper 12 volts. Oh, we were. Look at that. 11.9. That's pretty good. Let me just adjust that ever so slightly. So I can make it 12.0. Okay, now that we're at 12.0, let me put this back onto the crossing of our LEDs. And I guess I can use this one too, right? Oh. 
Is it connect? Is it touching? I don't think it's touching. I think we should be okay. <laughs> All right, let's try. <laughs> Hopefully that's not touching. Okay, it's not. And run it. 9.13 volts, 9.12 volts. All right, so that's the voltage drop across these uh, LEDs, 9.12 volts. And if I do a quick calculation on my calculator, which I don't have up right now, so let me quickly fire it up. 9.12, I could, you know, I should be able to do this in my head, for goodness sakes. 9.12 divided by three, that's 3.04 volts across those LEDs. Now, if we're running 3.04 volts across those LEDs, huh? Well, what, well, actually, three point, that, that's that's pretty much right on. I mean, we're we estimated that our LEDs are going to be running somewhere between 2.8 to 3.6 volts. And if we when we get this up to 350 milliamps, then we're probably going to be pushing a little bit more through there than we are now. I mean, in terms of voltage, so it actually might even go, go a little higher. But that's pretty cool. So now we're at 3.04, 9.12 for the all three set. We might be able, we can actually calculate how much voltage this thing is actually pushing out. Or let's let's actually check the voltage across that MOSFET. And we might be able to actually see and get a better idea of how much energy this thing is actually burning off. So let's take a quick look at that. So in order to do that, I'm gonna have to look at the voltage across the drain and the source. So the drain, of course, is uh well, it's it's the it's the uh, it's is it the middle? No, it's not the middle. That's yeah, that is the drain. So it's it's from there to the yellow, which is a source over here. So let's try to do this without shorting it again. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Uh, it's the drain. Okay, hopefully that's not touching anything else. All right, and then we will connect the other end of this to the source, right over uh, here, okay, and connect that together, all right, powered up, let's see what we get across the, across the drain and source, 2.05, so basically two volts we got going through the, over the drain and source on this MOSFET, so two volts, across the drain source of that MOSFET. And we're running about 100 milliamps right now. So two, to, that's, that's two, well, yeah, 200 milliwatts. That's nothing. <laughs> 200 milliwatts off this. We could have probably even ran this off the, uh, the old BS270. It would work just fine. Hmm. Well, we're still running only 100 milliwatts. If we push this up to 350 where we wanna be, and let's say the voltage was still at the same range, so let's say just over three volts, well, that would actually push us into the watt range, like three volts times 350 milliamps. Yeah, we'd be close to about one watt there. And uh, this old BS270 would not be happy with one watt going through there. Hey, that's pretty cool. Not bad. All right. So I think we're actually doing pretty well. I'm pretty happy with the way things worked out here. Um, what I'd like to do is, oh, 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 that's right. There was another thing I wanted to point out, actually, which we don't actually need to see the circuit for this. But if you remember, I was um, in one of the previous videos, I talked about how MOSFETs have an inherent resistance. Remember, so the analogy was we were looking at MOSFETs and comparing them to garden hoses, right? I was saying that, you know, how hard it is to actually block a garden hose with your hand. It's almost impossible. But if you put a valve on there, you can put a little bit of effort onto that valve and therefore block that garden hose. So a MOSFET works in a similar way, a little bit of effort on the gate of that MOSFET and you'd be able to funnel a lot more current uh, through the, the garden hose or through the rest of the MOSFET, which is from the drain to the source. But we also, I said that when you do that, it's not a perfect path. It's not like it's a perfect switch. There's a little bit of resistance between the drain and source. So when, when, you've, when you've turned that valve a little bit, the MOSFET behaves like a really small resistor. And here's the interesting thing is, I've, I've discovered that MOSFETs, particularly uh, the MOSFET that I'm working on here, they like to have a good solid turn on that valve. And what I mean by that is, if you apply a little bit of voltage, let's say five volts, like we were before on the gate of any MOSFET, it'll work, but it's not really pushing it all the way. 
And so what ends up happening is you get a higher resistance inside that garden nose. The valve is not completely open because five volts isn't enough. And so as a result, you get this varying resistance through that MOSFET, which is it's mildly predictable, but not all that predictable. But if you push it up to 12 volts, like we have on our circuit, now the MOSFETs get all the way open. It cranks that valve to its fullest. And so now the valve is completely open. It, there's still a resistance. We can't get rid of the resistance, but the, 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 the advantage now is with a lot of voltage, a lot of power on that valve, the resistance is, is known and it's consistent. So now we have a consistent known resistance on a MOSFET. And why is that gonna help us? Well, it's gonna help us because in order to get this circuit up to 350 milliamps, I've gotta start making some calculations on what are those, what those parachute resistors need to be. And if I can be assured that the MOSFETs have a known and constant resistance, well, then that'll just make the calculation so much easier. So we're in a great spot. Now the calculation is gonna take some time. I gotta to have to pull up a spreadsheet and do some work on that. And I don't wanna bore you <laughs> right now with trying to do that. Actually, technically, it's not about me boring you. It's probably because it'll just take me too long and I'm gonna make too many mistakes and I'd end up being embarrassed. So <laughs> I really don't wanna do it right now. I think right now I'm, I'm actually kind of happy where we are. We've got this circuit working. We did some soldering. It's, it's brilliant. So why don't we just leave it there? And on the next video, uh, well, I'll do some calculations before the next video. In the next video, I'll reveal them and, um, and I'll maybe outline exactly how I got there. Uh, of course, if I have any challenges or if I come up with any revelations, of course, I'll, uh, I'll point them out. But the next video, what we can do is I can use those calculations and put in some better, uh, some more accurate parachute resistors so we can get 350 millivolts out of this, uh, out of the circuit and light up these LEDs to where they're supposed to be. Until then.